then giving some details for the data encryption standard. Um, this is a block cipher. Um, we will uh, talk further about uh, the various uh, modes of uh, block ciphers. Um, and as I say, you know, there's more uh, block ciphers around than there are stream ciphers in the symmetric encryption space. Um, the block size in terms of the data, both um, input and output uh, uh, blocks, uh, are 64 bits. So we have a 64-bit a block size. Um, and uh, then we've got a key. Now, there's a 64-bit key, but it is a 56-bit uh, true key and eight parity bits. Um, and these aren't just simply parity bits. Um, this, uh, given the size, I'm, I'm fairly sure that this is, in fact, Hamming code, which um, becomes important. Um, uh, Des uh, and uh, most of the other uh, block ciphers that are acceptable, anyways, has um, error correction built into it because when we get into the, the different modes, um, there is often chaining of um, the output of uh, one operation to the next block. And therefore, if uh, something, you know, there, there's an error of even one bit uh, early in the process, uh, that would mean that the entire um, encrypted, you know, uh, cipher text uh, is useless because it's all uh, going to be affected by, uh, you know, one error early in the process. However, uh, DES does have error correction built into the algorithm, and I believe it's um, within two... Uh, Blocks, it can correct the error and, and is back on track. Um, and, and again, um, the 56 bit key size um, and eight uh, parity bits is, is consistent with the size of error correcting Hamming code uh, for this type of operation. So uh, that's probably what's happening there. Um, the, the 56 bits. Uh, gives you 72 quadrillion possible keys. And there's, I think, 15 zeros in that uh, number. Uh, well, of course, it's, it's not really zeros because it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, binary arithmetic and, and so forth. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, 72 and 15 zeros after it. Um, that's what that number would look like. That's the, the number of possible keys. That, that is our uh, key space, uh, address space, in terms of uh, the keys that, that we can use. There are um, a, a number of keys. I um, can't remember whether it's 48 or 64. Um, anyway, there are, uh, there are a, a very few. I think there's four keys that actually do not do anything. Um, and then there are uh, these additional keys that um, uh, provide um, fairly weak encryption and, and can be attacked. So um, implementations of uh, DES, uh, generally speaking, have in them, uh, you know, hard-coded uh, the... Uh, check that you don't use any of these particular uh, keys. Uh, but out of 72 quadrillion possible keys, that's not a big deal. Um, there are uh, rounds of operations. As uh, I said, in, in terms of Feistel ciphers, um, there we have um, uh, substitution going on and permutation going on at the bit level. Um, we are uh, dealing with uh, substituting uh, bits 
patterns of bits, um, uh, rearranging, uh, permuting, transposing uh, patterns of bits, um, and doing this in multiple rounds. And there's 16 rounds of the simple substitution and permutation operations to do the encryption. Um, the uh, in order to uh, decrypt, um, you just run the encryption algorithm in reverse. Um, and that, uh, uh, well, you know, that's very often the case. If you, uh, you know, you have a simple Caesar cipher, um, you, uh, you know, jump three letters ahead to encrypt, and then you just drop back three letters uh, behind to do the decryption. So, you know, it's, it's that way. Um, but notice, if, if you do that, if you, um, uh, whether you jump three characters ahead or three characters behind with the Caesar cipher, in either case, you end up with um, encrypted, you know, ciphertext. And, and so, and this becomes important uh, a bit later on, um, the, uh, you know, decryption um, is, is just the reverse and, and is itself an encryption function if you are operating on plain text. Uh, so it's, um, you know, it's not as if uh, it's, you know, specifically encryption is done this way and decryption is done that way. It's more like it's forward and reverse. And uh, so decryption um, works equally well in, in terms of encrypting uh, plain text. Um, uh, going to uh, keys again, like, you know, key, the key management is, is key. Um, uh, key generation and choice, uh, completely random. And, and as I say, you know, uh, specifically hard coding, uh, when you come up with those particular keys, no, throw them out, try again. Um, but choose keys from the entire key space. Uh, make sure that it's not biased, that it's not uh, choosing the same keys over and over again or, or choosing from a subset of uh, the key space. Um, the, uh, oh, uh, shoot, what was it? Uh, um, Netscape. Um, when they, they were first implementing uh, uh, SSL, um, supposedly it was a 128-bit key, but um, they were seeding that with um, the uh, uh, timestamp uh, from the computer. Um, but that only gave you, uh, oh, uh, you know, 12 bits of, of entropy. Um, and uh, therefore, um, they were actually, d despite the fact that they had this 128-bit key size, um, they only had uh, 4,000 possible keys that they were choosing from. So that, uh, you know, that was a weakness in, in the implementation, and it's always the implementation. So make sure you choose the keys from the entire uh, key space. Um, there is, uh, you know, uh, changing of keys. Don't use keys too often. You use keys too often. You're giving away information about what the key is. And, uh, of course, you know, how do we dispose of the keys um, when we are finished using them? Uh, and that will depend on what we have used them for.